Right, welcome back to the channel. It is, uh, what is it today? Thursday today. Thanks very much for watching everybody that's uh, tuning in. Um, I'm heading to the woods to have a look at a fan bearing or a tensioner bearing on a 140-5. So, um, be about an hour and 20 minutes or so and uh, hopefully we'll find the machine. Right, I'm in the woods. I've got this 14 tonner with a Failed tensioner bearing. Have a look down here. You can see. You can hear it knocking. I don't know if you can see it moving. So I'll get that replaced. 15 mil socket on there. I'll get it pulled off. Yeah, that's it off. Got to make sure you get the dowel back into the locating position on the engine block and it's a bit of a temperamental thing to find but hold this you see so i've got my fresh one here handy little job where the belts are on. Good, all done. Well, that was straightforward enough. Um, nice little job to start the day. It is 20 past 11 now, so I'll be back to the yard for lunchtime and we'll see what else there is to do. I'll probably gather some bits up and uh, try and try and get some jobs organized. So yeah, I'll catch you back at the yard. the next job of the day I've got a NH3 sensor on a digger to sort out just looking through the gloom there he is there look can you spot him don't know whether he'll want us back down at the turning circle or whether we'll just work on the roadside he hasn't got a CV in that digger so can't shout him up hey the weather's taking a turn it is miserable around here. Um, this is that digger with the slew motor in. I remember saying, hopefully I don't see that till it needs a service, but um, yeah, we've got an NH3 sensor, which is, oh, have I got one? Should have one. I do have one, please tell me I've got one. Yes, ha, that one there. Get that ready. Grab my waterproof boiler suit. Yeah, NH3 sensor. The NH3 sensor's job is to make sure that all the ad blue that's getting sprayed into the SCR, um, make sure that it's all getting used, it's all getting treated. Um, that is detecting ammonia. So any unburnt ad blue comes out the exhaust as ammonia. So the job of that is to tell the ad blue pump basically to dial it back a bit or give a bit more, etc. So this one has failed. Now normally they fail when they don't have those exhaust flaps on. Um, you can get water going to the tailpipe and it. Uh, when you get water on the sensor, it damages the sensor basically. Um, but this one has got a tailpipe flap on it, so it is a... What I would say, just a component failure rather than a water ingress. So I'll get suited and booted and uh, shouldn't take too long this one. 
As you can see, we've got a after treatment outlet NH3 failure. Is what the laptop's telling me. Um, so yeah, we'll get that exhaust cover off and uh, get it replaced. So I've just been having a look with the laptop, making sure the engine and add blue pump software is up to date everything's good with that i've also dipped the tank and using the refractometer to check the add blue quality it's absolutely spot on the nose and the um i've used the litmus paper to check the tank for any contaminants everything's okay that way so i'm going to take that exhaust cover off and um, get this sensor installed so that ends the NH3 sensor, that's the NOx outlet sensor. The difference is basically the colour of the conduit. Um, well, when you look at the NOx sensors, the dirty NOx sensor, which is a sensor straight out the engine, the colour of the conduit's black, which is dirty. And the NOx sensor the, after the after treatment is grey, which is for clean. And they are different part numbers, so you can't chop and change them. Like I say though, this is an H3 sensor. I've got it cracked off. Sometimes it can be a bit temperamental at coming out because of the heat, but this one's coming out nicely. So I'll get this changed out and fit the new one and hopefully the cores will disappear. So what we're doing now is uh, an after treatment test. It'll run everything up, do a dosing cycle, and hopefully it'll realize that it's got a new sensor in it and the cores will disappear. So at the moment we're just waiting for the uh, the the DOC to get up to about 200 degrees. Shouldn't take long. We're up to 178 degrees now. So let it do its thing, and fingers crossed, be another job jobbed. So that's it completed. The code has now disappeared. Service test successful. Look, happy days. So this driver can go back to work and uh, can head back down the road now. There we go, that's him back to work. I'll put all my laptop stuff away, look. My goodness me, I've had more wires and cables out than I know what to do with. Well, no, I do know what to do with them. That's the point, in it? Right there. My cables. Right there. Right, sit and do the paperwork for that now. Probably take me longer to get all the cables and wiring out and uh, paperwork than it has to do the job, but it is what it is, isn't it? So, yeah, we'll crack on. Another forest. Um, today I'm way over in the northeast um, and I've got a 160 high track to go and have a look at. Now it's a bit of a walk in that direction, um, but what it is, uh, the new machines come with key fobs like your car, and it's a remote key fob. You've got a, a lock and an unlock button, um, and the owner noticed that. When he clicks the unlock button, it doesn't unlock the machine. So you have to use the key. Uh, the fob will still work the, you know, once you get inside, you can still start the machine with the, with, with the button and everything like that. So it's not been a desperate job to do. It has been on my list of jobs to do since October, but it's one of those jobs that just kind of gets put back a week and put back back a week and before you know it, it's Christmas time so I was going to come between Christmas and the new year there and do it but uh, the owner um, the owner was away from the machine and he'd taken the keys with him so got it organised to do today so I'll head over that in that direction I did do the training course or the online training again between Christmas and the new year just to remind me 
how to do it because it's the first time I've done it and uh, yeah we'll see, we'll see how it goes I might end up might end up putting an ignition barrel in this machine because I can't get the fobs to register we'll, we'll see how it goes though we'll see how it goes laptops charged so we'll make our way over to the machine and uh, see what happens bit of an adventure but I've just come round the corner and there it is look at the end of this field I'll definitely not get the van any closer than I'm parked anyway walk up this hill or do I walk down the hill into that bog hmm side of the fence is that on I'll go this way look oh so I've made it to my digger as you can see it's locked and if I unlock it, it's still locked, but the lights come on. You see the lights are on, and then if I lock it, the lights go off. And that's what they do. It'll even, you've got like, uh, you had a fleet of these diggers sat one by one next to each other, and you grab the key. You can identify which key goes to which machine by pressing it, and it flashes the lights. Um, so yeah, hopefully this new um, new fobs will be able to lock and unlock remotely. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Um, this is one of those diggers where you don't wear your boots in the cab. I'll show you. It is tidy in here, look. Tinted windows, very nice. Right, I'll get me uh, laptop set up. I think it's only a five minute job, or it should be. Um, but whether it's a five minute job on the first attempt, is another matter. Well, it is it is a five minute job like, it doesn't take much. Um, and I have successfully programmed a new fob. I can tell you I have because when I press the uh, identify button, it pips the horn. Same with the other fob. But when I shut this door, Still doesn't lock it. And when the customer phoned and told me about what was happening, obviously these are a new machine and a new product and I thought I'll just do a bit of research before I jump out and whatnot and I did find a service bulletin and the service bulletin says been determined that on some dash 7 models the smart key can't be used for locking unlocking or starting the machine because of a recognition error caused by the fob so there's been a fault with the fob so you order the new fob with the certain part number which then has a green sticker on and uh, yeah program two new fobs jobs are good and it looks like it might not be a good one. Looks like we have got a problem. The straightforward jobs. The jobs that you think, oh, it'd be a nice little ride out there, half an hour. <laughs> 15 minute walk. Ugh. Um. So, what I'm going to do is go home. Uh, I like to go and get some tools and I'll pull this door apart and see if I'm getting any power through this hinge hinge mechanism. There's no that will just pop off. Need a screwdriver. You should always carry a screwdriver in your pocket. Hmm. Screwdriver, multimeter. Let's go from there. That sucks. Never mind, we'll persevere.
So before I go, I've just had a quick look at the wiring diagram for it and it's pretty straightforward. Um, the controller controls the lock and unlock actuator. It doesn't go through any relays or anything. Um, so what I can quite easily do is pull the back of the cab out. We can know what tools I need for that. Uh, so I need tools for pulling the back of the cab out. I've had a bit ratch and uh, I did find a screwdriver in the customer's toolbox. So I've got this off. Um, so I can check powers into the lock and unlock motor here. Um, and then I can also do a continuity check for the wiring that goes back to the controller because it goes through this, um, what do they call this? A micro slip ring, which is this here. So rather than the wire, sort of bending backwards and forwards every time you're in and out the cab it goes through this sort of it's a bit like um what should i call it uh, uh rotary coupling but a mini 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 one your rotary coupling would be what transfers the oil from the top half to the travel motors dozer blade etc um so that's what that is down there so quite possible that something in there isn't right um broken wire i was just hoping i would pull that plastic cover off and the plug wasn't plugged in or something daft like that but it was so i'll uh i'll wander back up to the van have a sandwich get me multimeter and come back down and do a couple of tests see what we've got it's uh good to know there's a chair there anyway if I get fed up of walking backwards and forwards to the van, there's a place to rest. Bag full of tools. I've had some lunch. And I'll head back. So there's absolutely nothing happening at this plug whatsoever. Um, so maybe that doodah there is broken. I'm going to pull the back of the cab out now and find the smart key controller and then I can pin, I can do a continuity test between there and the controller and I can also pin the back of the controller plug and see if it's outputting. So yeah, we'll go and find that now. So um, what I should have brought with me is my extension cables for me multimeter because the distance between that plug there and the plug on the controller is the, the leads are only just long enough to do a continuity test and um, so I was kind of getting the I could have done with an extra pair of hands really if I had an extra pair of hands just to shove the uh, shove the connector into there and then I could have been in here pinning the plug at the back of the controller there the job would have been a lot easier um, so I was struggling on a bit. There was one wire though that I definitely couldn't get continuity through, which was a red and green wire. Um, so I've followed the wire in through this, through this door here, through this hinge mechanism thing, and it goes into the main loom here. Um, so what I did was I checked this bit of harness here that goes, th checked this bit of harness here that goes through the door, and right enough, me. What colour was it now? Red and green was the that number three. Can't remember now. Pin number three. Oh, yes, I'm sure it's pin number three. It is. Um, pin number three. The wire from there through to there. I've got no continuity on. So that explains why the central locking won't work. I've checked the wire from here, which is going to the machine loom, all the way back into there. Every single wire has continuity. So what I need to do is uh, order this bit of loom here, which will hopefully come with this hinge, well it will, surely, um, and replace this. Simple. I'm not sure yet how that will come apart. Um, that's why I've taken this plate off, just to see if there's anything in there, but um, by the look of it, it shouldn't be too bad shouldn't be too bad so yeah got to the bottom of it I can put everything back together pack all my tools up and head away back to the van 
So I'm back in the van now and uh, I'm going to make my way back across the other side of the country. Um, yeah, the, by the time we get back over there, it'll be finishing time. So we'll leave it at that for today and for the week. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a like and uh, yeah, see what we get up to next week. I've got a good idea, but I'm going to leave it as a cliffhanger. See you on the next one. Ta-da for now.